I suppose I was an unconventional child when it came to my dietary choices. I happen to love color greens. One of the many reasons why I always find a way to grow collards and kale today is to bring back childhood memories. I have shown you how I grow kale and collards in a previous video. However, this time I want to show you how I usually cook it and eat it as a bona fide Brazilian. You may want to give it a try. Fresh collards are pungent and sweet and crispy and soft and divine. So to cook traditional Brazilian collards, you will need to harvest it out of your kitchen yard. Bonus points if the yard has a concrete laundry sink called a tanque mounted to the outside wall of the house, equipped with a plastic spout, where you used to take baths as a baby. Alright, I digress. Wash the collard leaves well under running water. Of course you can buy store-bought collards or kale, and at times I've had to. At the risk of sounding like a snob, what you buy can rarely be called food. It is more akin to cardboard, with faint, bitter overtones. It is elementary sacrilege. My grandmother would sternly ask, Você tem coragem? Which means, do you have the courage? Or as a better translation, how dare you? I'm using traditional collards, as well as red Russian and lancinado kale, which are not traditional varieties in Brazil. I suppose the red Russian leaves would be accepted by finicky matriarchs due to its tender texture. However, lancinado kale is a bit tougher, and I'm sure would be rejected by purest Brazilian cooks. I have to admit one thing, Brazilians love their food as is, and are, in general, resistant to change. We won't easily accept different ingredients, we call them esquisito, or mixing the flavors, also esquisito, and that means weird, not exquisite as it sounds. If you've been watching me, you know I'm not afraid of trying new things in the kitchen. Some Brazilians seeing this express a mix of anxiety, fear and disgust. I care less. If you happen to be picky about textures, you may want to de-stem the leaves prior to continuing on to the next step. I don't mind the tougher textures of the stems, but I can see why some would find it disagreeable. I especially think this to be unnecessary if the leaves are new and tender. If they are old or store-bought, doing that is a good idea. Stack the leaves up making a pile. It should be big enough to roll it as a tightly packed log. This is harder to do with a crenellated kale since it is harder to keep it flat. Maybe that is why Brazilian cooks always use the smooth leaved collard green. The next step is chopping and this is the most crucial step in preparing traditional Brazilian collards. It separates the pros from the wannabes. You will need the sharpest knife you have and great dexterity. Once you have the leaves packed tightly into a log, start cutting slices as thin as you possibly can. The first cuts may come out irregular and thick. That's okay. You probably would not pass muster according to a Brazilian matron anyway, and I wouldn't either. They pride themselves in how thin they can cut collards. You can't expect to excel right away. You will need years of training. I wouldn't dare volunteer cutting kale for a large communal meal just yet. That role is reserved to the expert. When groups of Brazilian women get together to cook food for lots of people, the one who can cut collards the thinnest is already known by all and is always chosen to this task by unspoken consensus. Ideally, it will be so fine as to look like hair. Kale and collards are superfoods. They pack vitamins and minerals and phytochemicals that science doesn't even know what to do with. Eating it regularly has been linked with cancer prevention, so while I love it for what it is and its taste, it's good to know it's part food, part medicine. Reserve all your cut collards in a bowl. Remember that it will wilt down, so all this volume will disappear. Chop one or two cloves of garlic. 
crushing them with salt in a small mortar and pestle is another traditional way of going about this. Get a cast iron pan heated, coated with some oil, and drop the garlic in. Let it get golden, but don't let it burn. I add a bit of turmeric powder, but this is completely optional, and actually not traditional at all. I'm sure there is some perplexed Brazilian watching out there thinking to himself, I didn't think you could add turmeric. Well, you can, if you want to. When the garlic is golden brown and the pan is hot, add the sliced collards all at once. Mix it gently as it starts to wilt. Next, I add a bit of salt to taste. I do not over salt it. I personally don't think collards need much salt. I prefer to add it towards the end because I like to sear in the flavor of the garlic first before the salt starts to wick away moisture from the leaf cells. The whole cooking process should take less than a minute or so, depending on how hot your pan is. You do not want to overcook it. As my mother says, so dá um susto. Just give it a scare. As soon as it wilts, turn the heat off. Cut up a lime in half. Your collars will continue cooking a bit from the residual heat of the pan. You are good to enjoy it with a squeeze of lime. This brightens the flavor and actually makes the nutrients more bioavailable. While I'm eating it by itself here, Collards are usually a side dish accompanied by rice and bean stew and farofa. It is delicious nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs>